Good morning, everyone. Good morning for those who already joined us. I do appreciate your being on time today. Um, Bill, Liz, Hank, Homozo, it's great to see you guys, everyone. I really appreciate you being here on time, and I will um, honor that um, by starting right away. Um, and yeah, I guess people will continue to trickle in, and um, yeah, we'll see them as they come through. Thank you very much for joining us again uh, this morning, and I do pre appreciate it. Um, if you can just confirm for me that you can uh, hear me and you can see the slides, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, if you could just do me that honor, I'd really appreciate it. Great. Thank you. Massive thanks to you guys. All right. Fantastic. Appreciate it. All right. So without further ado, um, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult to start this conversation without, you know, referencing um, just the, the devastation um, and, and impact of COVID-19. I mean, it is really um, the backdrop to which so much of our need to, to kind of digitize our workplaces, to, to digitally transform our companies, um, that, um, that we tend to be having these conversations. Um, however, um, I know some of you are aware that companies like uh, A-Game Business and, and many others out there have been in the you know, striving to help businesses to digitally transform in the hope that should there be disruptions, yes, we never had the, the expectation that there would be of this nature, but should there be um, any disruptions that uh, we are able to, um, you know, to continue functioning, to continue operating, and more than that, continuing to thrive and to succeed uh, in the, in the comp competitive landscape. And one of my favorite um, quotes is by Doug Connett, which I, I didn't include in the slide, um, in the slides today, but he says, in order for us to win um, in the marketplace, we must first win in the workplace. And so what I'm going to be sharing with you today is really how we can go about um, doing so. Um, so. So for those who are familiar with, with our webinars, you know, we always do try and mention um, that we sometimes do have technical drops, but we've hardly had any, uh, at least not recently. Um, and so if we do, just simply switch out um, and switch back in again. And if I, I'm the one who has technical difficulties, just bear with me. Um, it'll take me a few minutes to just uh, jump back in. Um, and more than that, uh, what we're talking about today is never, never really a, a get-rich-quick scheme. Um, it, it's, the concepts are simple, but they're not necessarily easy to do. And I, and I'm, I know you folks can, can differentiate between those, those two. So without further ado, for those who don't know me, uh, I'm KK Diaz. I'm a business and digital transformation strategist um, and, uh, and also an author. I've had the privilege of working with some amazing people, um, including on the team um, who's attending today, Liz, Liz Cruza, whom I highly appreciate. Um, she, she's uh, magnificent in helping us putting together insights for companies. So if you happen to be somebody who's looking for insight, either whether that insight refers to how digital transformation can be utilized in your business or your marketing or how you can, um, you know, re-strategize or rebrand your business. Um, you know, people like Liz and myself are here to assist you with that, uh, with that. So our business, for those who don't know, we formulate business strategies. We, we implement digital transformation to help companies to really scale and to avoid disruption. Um, and we also have digital marketing and CRM services, including what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, some of our clients that we've worked with are really across the spectrum in terms of size and industry. I'm not going to uh, go into too much detail around that. I'm always I'm happy to, to, to have that conversation offline with you. Um, but in jumping in directly into today's conversation, um, some of you who've attended last week's uh, webinar or at least got to watch the, the replay, you'll remember uh, you know, the points that I made here. And more than that, it's really about creating context for the conversation because it's really the same context. Um, and the context, uh, more than anything, has to do with the fact that for a long time, there has been this evolution of, of changes, right, in, in terms of customer preferences, in terms of how customers are buying from us, how they look uh, for, for our products and services, how they find them, how they buy them, and how they really consume uh, those products and services. And these changes have really been driven by, by uh, you know, by behaviors that, that relate to, to, to things like instant gratification, uh, on-demand delivery, meaning customers, um, you know, want things when they want them. Um, and when they want them, they want to consume them now so they can get the results or the success out of those products and services right away. 
Um, and they also want to subscribe to a product or service, i.e. pay as you go, right? Uh, and not have to come up with massive lump sums of, uh, you know, of capital in order to invest in your products or services. They want to be able to subscribe and pay smaller fees um, on an ongoing basis. And they want those products and services to be personalized. And, and also uh, another big threat that companies are facing, um, especially in countries like, 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 in, like in South Africa, is globalization where we have these massive juggernauts of, of companies coming from around the world to really uh, compete in our, in, our, in our industry, in our marketplace. Um, and and that, that can be difficult for, for, for existing incumbents because we know uh, international companies, when eventually when they do come here, they tend to be a lot more sophisticated and a lot more prepared than we may be. And talking about that preparation and sophistication, um, you know, over the last decade plus, right, uh, give or take, uh, there's really been a, an, an organic, organic evolution of digital transformation. And this has really been due to those custom expectations and changes in lifestyles that I just touched on. And the speed at which technology um, is changing and, 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 you know, and, and unfortunately COVID-19 really exacerbated the, the need um, for the digital transformation. But more than that, it, it exacerbated the, the, the digital disruption, which caused an inflection point. Right. So the inflection point that we are referring to here is one that happens between business and technology um, um, and, and, and how these two forces work together to create um, this inflection point. So an inflection point is really a phenomena or um, a change, an event that, that changes the, the circumstances or progress of a company, an industry. And like we've seen now with COVID-19, it really changes the, the circumstances of an entire country the political landscape, um, the economy at large. And these changes, as you've seen, folks, they are significant, okay? Now, those changes can either be positive or negative. However, this time around, they were significantly negative, right? And, and really, this change was decisive, and very few companies or people uh, have been able to avoid uh, or escape it. Um, so regardless of what industry you're in, we know you've been affected by COVID-19, um, and it's really about adopting digital transformation in order to grow and thrive. And if you don't, uh, you know, you, you've, number one is the likelihood is you've already delayed too long and you've, to some degree, you've already missed the boat and, and chances are your business is failing, whether you're aware of it or not. Um, and, and again, COVID-19 has really been the, the greatest of challenges and enemies that have kind of accelerated the need to adopt digital transformation. But, but I know that people who are on this webinar um, and, and, and people who've attended previous webinars are out there looking for information in order to see how they can, you know, transcend this inflection point and, and see what, what, the future, what the future really can bring for them. Um, and in order to, to create that new future, uh, or rather in order to have and benefit from a better future, you have to create that future yourself. And uh, part of what I'm going to share with you today is exactly how you can go about doing that. So, it's really about avoiding disruption. Uh, it's, avoiding, uh, it's about avoiding the changes in competitive environments um, uh, that results from competition, from external forces, and so forth, as we've seen before. So how can we do that? We can do that by building a digital modern workplace, right? This is a workplace whose operations are digitized um, and its teams are equipped for productivity, for, for mobility, uh, being able to work from home, and being able to stay connected and secure um, at all times, right? Because we know that uh, in almost all cases, workplaces have been designed in such a way that data uh, and other uh, important assets um, are kept safe and secure. Uh, but now that uh, employees uh, are working from home, um, it does actually compromise security. And part of what we're going to talk about today is how to improve that security. However, though, the problem is we have challenges. There are challenges that, that stop us from being able to create these modern workplaces or these digitally transformed modern workplaces. And some of those uh, challenges include siloed systems, right, where departments tend to create um, and, and procure and implement and deploy their own systems. And so you find that uh, the different departments don't have a way of effectively communicating with each other or working effectively, right? There tends to be duplicate data, uh, meaning wastage of resources, wastage of time, which results in duplicate data. There are manual processes which can um, be, be systematized and digitized 
you know, I was speaking to somebody yesterday, one of our team members actually, who, who also consults at, at some, some major um, financial advisory uh, companies. And, you know, it was shocking what he said about the company. But we know it's a norm. Okay, they're not the exception. Um, uh, you know, there are so many companies out there that are well established, some that are listed, uh, but tend to have some of the more shocking um, uh, and manual processes for, for areas that can be simply digitized and systematized. Um, we know now that this is no longer an option, right? It is uh, something that uh, almost all of us need to learn to do, not necessarily to technically have the competency, but to at least have an idea. Um, what needs to, to happen so that we can find the right people to, to attend to those, um, those challenges or, or those, those areas that lack. Um, also, as a result of all of these, we tend to have insufficient reporting, i.e. we don't know where we are and therefore what we need to do to fix in order to know where we're going next. And like I mentioned earlier, security issues are, are really abound. And, um, and as a result, unfortunately, even more companies are getting um, cyber, cyber attacked, um, you know, um, important data is being, is being stolen. There are, there are threats just about everywhere. So it's really important that we do take care and secure those mobile devices while our employees are working from home. Okay, so in transforming workplace, um, a big component of it is really about enabling our people to be able to collaborate, okay? And, and collaboration is a business imperative. Now, transforming um, your, your, your workplace is, is critical also because your competition is moving fast, right? The competition out there is moving fast. Things are moving fast. Um, it's really about us getting ready. And we need to reduce the cycles and increase the quality of collaboration in our organizations um, so that we can have that major differentiation uh, in order to drive growth in our business. Now, in fact, 86% of leaders say that the lack of collaboration or communication um, between their teams um, is one of the biggest reasons for workplace failures, right? Um, so this is clearly a massive problem that needs to be attended to. Um, and that um, transformation is already taking place. It has been taking place prior to COVID-19, right? Um, and 45% of leaders have or say that they are implementing and they need to implement web-based collaboration solutions in order to scale their businesses, right? And this was, this was 2019, folks. The stats I'm showing you was 2019, so I'm sure you can imagine that the need has actually increased and so have these figures. Um, now, while many productivity apps have existed for a while for the workplace, uh, what, what is lacking though are the tools to make uh, teams to collaborate more effectively, whether within workplaces or outside of those workplaces, i.e. working from home in order for, to make them uh, more productive. And 65% of leaders agree that moving from what's called the old school hierarchical physical structures to mobile and remote teams based working is more critical for their success right now. And again, this was something that came out of 2019 already. So you can only imagine um, what, um, what, what, what the stats look like now or, or the need that looks like right now. Um, and, and you know what the sad reality is, is that only 7%, only 7% of companies say they were truly ready to transform, okay? That is the sad reality. But again, this is why we are addressing this issue today. So um, I, I have to, I have to um, uh, what's the word? Um, uh, I have to mention as a disclaimer, um, I have to declare, that's the word. I have to declare that, uh, and I know some of you know already that we are, we do have bias uh, towards certain technology in as far as what we're doing, but I'm going to share with you specific technology today, but I'm not saying use that specific technology. All I'm saying is when you are looking for technology to help you with a certain um, operational area in your business or operational function or functional area rather, um, consider the principle of what I'm showing you and not necessarily the brand that I'm showing you. Um, so, so, so please do forgive me for that. Um, if, if you are currently using uh, different technology or are deciding to look for different technology, I'm not here to dictate what you should use. I'm simply sharing um, concepts and, and principles. I hope that's fine with you guys. Um, and, and I do hope that I'll get some, some yes or no's in the, in the chat um, just to acknowledge that. So um, these collaboration tools really um, need to allow you to build the kind of modern workplace that enables 
um, your companies um, cre will create some sort of a hub, right? Some sort of a, a communication hub for, um, uh, for your team. Um, thank you, I do appreciate you guys. Thank you for that acknowledgement. You want your modern workplace to enable your, your teams to really come together and bring everything that the team needs, right? Including how they speak to each other from a chat perspective, uh, threaded conversations, uh, meetings, video conferencing. And this is not just for your team, but it's also for your team in order to communicate with the rest of the world, right? You want them to be able to uh, collaborate with you, uh, to collaborate rather with each other from a content perspective um, and, and using other apps, right? So, so one of those apps is really uh, Microsoft Teams, um, and, and what, what companies love about Microsoft Teams is really the ability to use other additional um, uh, Microsoft suite applications like Office 365, which a lot of people are already used to. I mean, I heard two days ago that just about 80% of the Fortune 500 companies are using Microsoft uh, productivity suite. So uh, a big part of the, 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 the business world is already using these apps. So again, I'm not dictating what you should use. It's really about the principles. Um, that I'd like to share with you. Um, and, and again, because um, you know, companies like Google and, and in some cases, um, Apple and, and of course Microsoft, they've created an entire suite, an entire ecosystem of apps that enable um, you know, inter enterprise grade security, compliance, uh, manageability, and all of those uh, fancy um, um, areas of, of enabling your company to be able to collaborate more effectively using um, the, the workplace um, technology. And I think there's a big difference between the old uh, pre-COVID-19 modern workplace and understanding that, you know, modern workplaces right now, uh, post-COVID-19, um, that we need to, to be a lot more mobile, i.e. enabling people to work from home, enabling people to work while traveling, while mobile, and so forth. So it's really under the, that pretext that I'm going to continue sharing some of this information with you. So what does this mean for your business? Um, now, it means that you need to obviously transform your workplace collaboration, right? You need to bring everything together into a shared workplace, um, workplace and a shared workspace. And by workplace, it could be, it does not necessarily need to be a physical place. It could be in the cloud virtually or whatever the case may be. Now, this is where you need to be able to, again, you need to be able to, to chat, meet, create and make decisions as teams. Um, and, and those teams sometimes include um, obviously working with, with your clients. And since all your content is kind of organized by teams and projects, you are then able to stay in flow of, of your work. Um, you also need to streamline your business processes. This is very important. If your business processes are not streamlined, it will make it that much more challenging uh, in order to create a modern workplace. Um, so you need, um, you need ready access to, biz, uh, to business critical data, to applications, and be able to execute repeatable processes efficiently and effectively and since um, you know a lot of these hubs a lot of these applications are what what's called true platforms it means you can plug in other apps services this is why i'm sure you've heard of uh, byod now byod uh, means or stands for bring your own device this is typically where you find people um, either some are using um, um, phones from, from smartphones from, from, from Apple, others are from Samsung, others are from completely different brands. Now, this is critical, folks, um, in order to enable your people to use their own device because that speaks to their own customer preferences. Remember, your people are, your, your, your teams are also your customers and it's really about keeping them happy and ensuring that they're constantly engaged. And part of being engaged or you facilitating that engagement is about helping your people to use the devices that they prefer. And so bring your own device to work is important. Again, when you have streamlined business processes, you are then able to plug those devices in. And this is why security is so important because all of these devices are so, are so different. You know, some are a little bit more comp compromised than others, but if your hubs, the hubs that you use for building your modern workplace are safe and they've got that enterprise or military security grade we spoke about earlier, it enables anyone and, and just about everyone, obviously with the right authority and, and permissions to plug into your modern workplace um, and use whatever, access the data, use whatever systems they need and then plug out uh, when they need to. And so really it's about imagining um, uh, the ability to seamlessly um, kick off, imagine repeatable processes and approvals without ever needing to leave, um, you know, to leave, uh, um, your, your home or your workplace or whatever the case may be. It's about constantly being 
being engaged and, and all the time. So I'm just going to quickly look. I think we have a question now. Uh, how much will the presenter be prepared for refresher courses? Look, uh, Maraka, um, we are available to, to, um, to help you with that. So I'm going to um, get in touch with you. If maybe you can send me your, your contact details after this, I will share my email address. As a matter of fact, you already have my email address. It would be more than a pleasure for us to help you with refresher courses, whether around uh, digital uh, transformation or, or specific technology. And thanks for the inquiry. We'd be more than happy to help you with that. So continuing to speak about, about the importance of connecting everyone on a single platform, you know, these hubs, whether it's Microsoft Teams or, or, or whatever other platform you may be using, it's very important and effective that such a tool uh, for C-level executives especially, um, that it's, it's made for, for everybody uh, to use, whether you are at a C-level executive uh, level or you are somebody on a factory floor, in a retail store, in a classroom, in a hospital, or whatever the case may be, whether you're in marketing production, it's really about being able to plug into the same hub. So you have to ensure that your hub enables just about everyone to be able to do that. Um, Maraka, thanks. I've got your email address. Uh, I'll make sure to get in touch with you. I do appreciate you um, for reaching out. Um, so in continuing, um, I just want to mention that security is one thing. Connectivity, seamless um, ability to, to give both your first line and, and back office um, you know, workers and managers and executives and just about everybody is important for them to be able to manage their schedules, do their work, to have visibility in terms of what they need to do. And more than that, how do they contribute to the overall business strategy? All of these tools enable your people to, see, um, to, to be able to access um, their, their work their teams, um, and, and obviously the data they need. And again, you need to provide that enterprise-grade security and compliance. Those are critical um, before you can, you can consider much else about how effective your systems can be. As mentioned, um, I'm going to show you a little bit about you know, some of the things. Yes, I know a lot of you are already using Teams. However, people tend to avoid Teams and go to Zoom for purposes of, you know, of, of, of video conferencing and so forth. But Teams does have the ability to do um, video conferencing and a lot more. So what I'm going to show you are some of those things. And again, uh, I mean, clearly today I'm also using, um, you know, Zoom to be able to run this webinar because these systems tend to work nicely together. Some are specialized in certain things. Um, and, and, and again, we, you know, we tend to use systems that the people we are interacting with are, are used to for purposes of seamless um, collaboration. Now, in going forward, again, I'm showing you principles. Yes, I'm borrowing from Microsoft Teams, but it's really about understanding the, 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 the importance of the principles. So what you want to be able to do is, is be able to run projects more effectively. Your processes need to be seamless and you need to be able to connect your people, right? In, in, in short, that's really what it's about. Um, whether they are at work or it, it modern, uh, whether they're working from home or whatever the case may be. Now, while projects at any given organization or department can be extremely varied, right, depending on what department or, or, or business you are in, uh, these projects tend to have varied and many different elements. And what I'm going to share with you uh, or what you're seeing on the screen now are sometimes uh, are the top six, right? You need to be able to pull the project team together, okay? You need to be able to schedule those tasks and the meetings. You need to be able to share information, collaborate on live documents, right? Um, and not create a document, email it to somebody. They work on a different version. They email it back to you. That's old school, okay? And very inefficient. What you want to do is have an ability to, to collaborate on live documents, uh, meaning have those documents uh, hosted and, and so that everyone can interact and uh, those systems can track and have an audit trail of who's making what changes um, and so forth. And you want to efficiently and effectively assign tasks and deadlines and keep track on who's doing what, at what point are they supposed to deliver it um, and, and have those, those lead measures, right? And, and, not, and not only uh, find out when it's, um, when, when it's already too late, you want to be able to see ahead of time the deadlines will be met or not. And obviously, you want to provide access not only to notes, um, but to the right information. Uh, that, that's as far as our projects are concerned. So I'm going to share with you what it looks like to have a project that is a launch event. Let's say, and I know a lot of companies right now are going to launch either new value propositions or they're going to launch um, new products or new, new projects, uh, really. So I'm going to very quickly share with you some of the components that you, you may need to look at. And as I mentioned, it really is about pulling your, your team together, 
um, uh, for these kind of projects. First, you need to, again, pull your team together. This may be the same team that you work with on a regular basis, um, or it may be cross-functional team or task force, or you may, be, you may have needed to outsource some of these functions. And you know, this is another critical, critical area. Work has changed. And so with work having changed, the relationships that we have with the people we work with has completely changed. And I'm seeing more and more what's called open organizations. Open organizations are the kind of organizations that really rely heavily on outsourcing uh, and, and bringing in the employees um, you know, on, on varied uh, nature of, of, of contracts and arrangements. This is happening more and more. And with that happening, the need to seem, streamline your processes and to obviously secure your data and to improve collaboration facilities it become that much more important. So it's really important that we, we do, um, you know, take what, we, what we're talking about today a lot more serious and not just about looking, um, looking at what it looks like, but actually testing it out. And in talking about testing it out, um, we do have um, a, a free six months, um, six months free trial that um, you can use for Microsoft Teams. So again, you already have my email address. Um, you can always, um, you know, just email me and say you're interested and then we'll, we'll see if you, you are in a position to, to have that fit for, for the applications that we have. Again, it's up to six months of free use. That means really being able to implement something this month and using it for the rest of the year at no cost to you. So that's some of the collaboration that companies like Microsoft out there are giving to, to businesses as a result of obviously the devastation of COVID-19 and obviously the need to digitally transform. So going back to this launch event, right? It's also important to assign tasks and as I mentioned, track deadlines, which is crucial for work to be done. You can do all of this within Microsoft Teams, right? And again, can you see how you obviously cannot do this within Zoom, right? Zoom is merely a virtual calling and a virtual collaboration um, uh, rather video conferencing tool, but uh, applications like uh, Microsoft Teams, Trello, Slack, uh, all of those uh, applications will help you to, to achieve this level of success. So I just want to quickly skip to the next slides without taking too much time around this, but should you want a demo of Teams of what else it can do, I, you know, we'd be more than happy to show you what that looks like. So now let's look at how necessary repeated business processes can, can are and how, how much they can uh, you know, take up a lot of time and energy. So, so Teams has been really designed to serve as the hub through which you can streamline many of those processes, right? Let's use a sales cycle as an example of repeated business processes, right? First, the seller submits, let's say, um, you know, seller submits a customer request, okay? And secondly, you then want to create, um, then the team then drafts the bid, uh, for example, a proposal of some sort um, for the customer. Then they need to submit that bid to the manager uh, for approval, that's step number four over here. Uh, and then um, that approved bid is then combined with another proposal that the team worked on to specifically address those customers' needs. And finally, the proposal is shared with the customer and hopefully the sales team closes the deal, right? Now let's see how teams can support um, all the elements of this process. Excuse me, and then we're bringing up sales because we know a lot of companies have struggled in as far as um, revenue is concerned, you know, suffered heavily um, over the last couple of months um, as a result. And so this is why we focused on, on, on sales, just to give you an idea. Now, in this example, our sales team is on site with the potential customer gathering requirements and ultimately submitting a request. And since they are doing this in real time at a construction site, for example, you know, um, our our hypothetic, uh, hypothetical salesperson is using a tablet, right? As you can see on the screen, I'm sure you can see him, um, him or her, uh, this is a him, you know, really using the app um, on, using Teams on Microsoft, um, rather Microsoft Teams on a tablet to be able to show and demonstrate to the client and make a presentation and do a presentation and still collaborate and speak to people um, the, the teams at work, right? So most sales organization really necessitate also CRM tools uh, for lead generation and capturing. Now, customers can connect, um, or rather you in this instance, um, as, a, as a business client, you can connect uh, your CRM tools, whether it's Salesforce, whether it's Microsoft Dynamics and other CRM applications out there. Now, it's very important to be able to, to enable your teams to, to do that. And again, it speaks to collaboration. Again, continuing with this example, the sales team also needs to update their bid document and verify materials, their prices. You want to be able to enable them 
um, to have this information, you know, via uh, whether it's via SharePoint or other forms of, of technology or processes that you are using. And they also want to look at uh, Power BI reports, dashboards uh, for, for live information that they may need so that when submitting bids for approval, you know, it's, it's less time consuming um, when communicating with clients, um, you, you know, your complicated processes uh, are made a lot more simpler, especially when you, when you didn't work in the same office um, or, or, or location as, as your manager or your team in a long time, right? Um, now, salespersons can, can be able to simply upload their folders, um, check the data, and really be able to do what they need to do in order to uh, provide the best service to the client. Um, because uh, we know that if you don't make the sales process seamless and painless for your customers, the likelihood of you getting the deal is really minimized. So again, a Microsoft Teams and applications like these um, enable your clients to be able to, uh, enable your people rather, and, and your teams to be able to, to give that uh, great customer experience while being connected back to the office for any additional information they may need while on site. Um, and also mobility, 100%. It's not just about tablets. These applications are really, um, um, they are called responsive, meaning any device that you bring, as long as the device has obviously the right operating system, whether it's Android or whether it's, um, um, it's um, iOS, you know, these applications um, um, work across the spectrum. So again, um, something else that is very critical for purposes of creating a high performance team and you enabling your teams to be productive and be able to collaborate. It's really about driving culture, right? Implementing the right culture and establishing the right culture, which is inclusive. Um, you know, it, it enables your team to work together um, and to meet anytime and anywhere remotely, whatever the case may be, you know, somebody could be in the car, another person could be at home, others could be at the office, um, you know, it, anybody could just be about anywhere. It's really about enabling your people to, to be able to, to, uh, to connect as they wish. And again, Microsoft Teams uh, enables you to do that. It's about creating teams within teams within teams. Now, it's critical to maintain a culture that is open, that is transparent, and is inclusive uh, with your teams to promote that collaborative environment, so to speak, um, that is ultimately best for everybody's work and ability to, to be productive. There's a way to streamline and save conversations in Teams or applications like Teams. And there are also built-in features like praise, right? And we know the importance of, of recognizing people for their work. So this way you are able to recognize and reward people um, uh, because it's, it's one of those natural uh, needs that we have as human beings to be recognized and to feel that we are being valued uh, for, the, for the work that we are, we are putting in, in, into the companies. And again, it's about team engagement um, and, and so forth. And you are able to catch team announcements um, uh, and, and so much else. You, know, you are able to have meetings, uh, what, what sometimes are called um, town halls. So individual business leaders can host meetings, all hands meetings to share what's, what's on top of mind, to report on businesses, to acknowledge great work that has been done by others, as well as to bond with the team. You don't have to meet with people physically in order to be able to do that. So again, um, uh, hubs like Microsoft Teams enable you to do that. And since not everybody can make these meetings in person, you want to be able to enable everybody to participate in those meetings um, and, 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 and really to take part and feel like they are part of the team. And this works whether you are local or you are really a global team. So borders are really um, you know, um, a thing of the past when you think about it. So I know I've been speaking about Microsoft Teams. So why you want to speak, why you want to look at Microsoft Teams specifically is that it, it works for just about anybody, right? From the, all the way up from the CEO to first line workers. It also um, is, is artificial intelligence powered. It gives you those um, AI powered experiences that are delivered by supporting applications like Microsoft Graph. Um, you know, it's really intelligent in as, in as far as in its ability to, to facilitate meetings. Um, and it, it can certify devices um, depending on who's working on which devices and really it caters for just about everybody's working style. Um, it has about 42 compliance regulations already, right, that support um, a, a lot of your, your, your um, regulations um, that you may need from a compliance perspective. And 
Um, it's also available in 53 um, languages, uh, just across 181 markets. And what I've seen Microsoft has been able to do uh, over the last couple of months, I think it, it's the application has been out for about 18 months as a matter of fact, but I remember seeing it live last year already, is that you can literally speak uh, a language that you, you yourself have never spoken before because Microsoft um, Teams enables you to, to, do, to make translations live on the spot. So whether you're speaking to somebody in Japan, somebody in Spain, and you actually don't speak their language, Microsoft Teams will give you live translation, um, not only of your, your English speaking to them, but them speaking in their native language, whether it's Jap Japanese or whether it's Spanish, it will uh, automatically translate um, uh, that, that information. This, again, really breaks down those, uh, those borders um, and therefore enables your company to be able to not only collaborate amongst yourselves, but to also collaborate with customers, regardless of that uh, previous uh, language barrier. Um, so there are more than half a million organizations that are currently using Teams. And uh, these were, were figures from a couple of months ago, um, late last year. I know this figure is just about doubled as a matter of fact. So as I mentioned, there are you know, 91 out of 100 uh, Fortune 100 companies are using Teams right now. Um, as mentioned, you know, um, there are more than 20 million active users daily on Microsoft Teams. Now, there are many companies, I'm not going to waste time talking through um, these examples, but GE, right, uh, Comscope, uh, many of these companies, they use um, Microsoft Teams and have benefited from the ability to not only collaborate, but again, security, um, the ability to uh, provide uh, efficiency and productivity to their teams uh, just right up uh, across the spectrum. Artificial intelligence is very um, helpful in teams. It's, it provides insight. It helps your people to be proactive. And these systems really enable your people or the system itself to be part of the team so that it can help your team to be proactive and to adapt depending on whether they're working on specific difficult customers or if they're working on, on challenging uh, circumstances like working from home. Uh, whatever the case may be. Now, um, what's available in Teams are inline messages and translations, as I, as I mentioned. Um, you know, you, you can have mobile companion mode, i.e., are you on a mobile phone? Are you on a, on a tablet? All of those things are really, are really there for you to, to, to be able to use. And it does, it, it transcribes those recordings as well, the, I mean, rather the, the, the conversation. So again, for, for people with this disability in terms of uh, maybe the, 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 let's say they are impaired from an ability to hear. Um, th there's a few seconds delay, but, but it does provide that transcription if you need it, as you can see the example on the screen. So again, this is really about enabling your teams right across the spectrum to be able to collaborate. Um, I've mentioned that um, it, it provides your ability to be mobile, but there's, um, there's an ability to also integrate both, not just software, but also hardware right across the spectrum. You've got robot, uh, you, you're able to use Teams in your meeting rooms, uh, whether it's on large screens or uh, all-in-one collaboration, desktop phones, just about anything really. Uh, and Microsoft is continuing to upgrade Microsoft Teams based on, um, on, on requirements as customers do need them. And we are also in a position to be able to customize Microsoft Teams for you um, should you need um, that, um, that support. So it really makes not just meeting easy, but um, collaboration, productivity, um, and efficiencies right across the spectrum. And the main reason why we want to do this is because you want to be able to give your customers consistent experiences across the spectrum. Right? Whether people are working from home, they need to be able to serve your customers um, consistently versus working from home or, or, or being at the office. So I've just about mentioned and covered um, everything really. And, and again, um, the ability to be mobile and do your work from anywhere is important. Compliance, security, being able to manage your teams, um, giving them adaptive experiences, um, and all of these functionalities are really important uh, for your ability to, to, to become the digital modern workplace going forward. The benefits are, uh, are massive, right? You are able to empower your employees. You get to engage customers again in person or virtually. You are able to optimize your operations and transform your products, your value propositions, which is critical. Again, going back to what we said in the beginning, you want to enable your people, um, your business rather, to transform its value proposition so that um, you know, it, it caters 
and it satisfies uh, existing um, customer preferences. So um, look, a big part of this is technical. I'm just gonna skip it. It's really not that important, but maybe just to mention here, a lot of people don't, don't know that Microsoft Team is part of a, a suite of applications that uh, Microsoft has have brought out over the last couple of years, including the likes of, of, uh, of, of Flow and Power Apps. This means um, being able to create uh, not only process to design your processes, but you are also able to automate your processes on the fly. Okay. And it's also known as no code and low code um, development, meaning it, even a person who's never seen or never done uh, coding before, they're able to use these apps to, to quickly put together, design a process and actually automate that process so that they team uh, or themselves can start using those apps. So, uh, Microsoft Teams is really part of a, a massive ecosystem of applications that you can use as and when you need them. And the beauty of it all is now it's just about all in the cloud. It's all online and you're able to access it from anywhere using any device. So these are just, um, again, a few, a few other uh, testimonials from companies that are using these apps right now. Unilever globally is using Microsoft Teams. Companies like Havi, you may not necessarily know of them. Um, but um, these are massive um, companies that are in the billions and as far as the annual turnover is concerned, and I'm talking billions of dollars. Um, schools as well can also be used. So again, if, if, you, if you are part of a school or you know uh, somebody who is, micro, uh, Microsoft is also giving away free um, Microsoft Teams uh, for up to six months in, in certain instances and more, especially for registered schools as well. Again, in order to enable uh, learning uh, um, from from home and, and so forth. So as I mentioned, Microsoft Teams, um, sorry, Microsoft also has what's called Flow and Power Apps. Um, these enable um, you to automate existing business processes. You can connect to many other apps that you are already used to. They are also pre-built templates that you can just um, use and customize based on what you need. And as I mentioned, it's really no code and low code, which means um, if there's any changes to be made to the code, it's very minimal, um, of course, unless if you have to do uh, advanced and highly sophisticated things. But this is where companies like ourselves come in and we can help you with those sophisticated applications. Um, and what I love about what Microsoft has done, which has really been at the ethos um, and principles of, of, of our company, is that you no longer need to rely on your IT company. Um, to, in order to, to be able to make these sophisticated changes, okay? Microsoft have built in amazing self-help files uh, and, and simplified the ability for you to be able to make the necessary changes that you need. Obviously, you want to be responsible and make sure that only people who have, um, you know, permissions and have the ability to make those changes are, are enabled to do so. And again, you can build custom apps, okay? Custom apps are really being able to build just about any app that you need. And an app means, um, you know, you want to be able to, to help customers fill in a particular form so that somebody else can contact them. And this is automated as a result of this. And depending on the journey that they need to go on, you know, based on behavior, um, if they do this, then this is what must happen. If they do that, that must happen. All of these things you can build within Microsoft Teams, okay? And again, um, it really... Um, not only empowers companies, but it also has disrupted a lot of the, 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 the digital and IT companies that um, have been around, um, you know, for decades using manual uh, or rather um, on-premise on um, digital technology because everything is just about in the cloud now and just about anybody can use all of these apps. So, folks, in, in, in really, in, as, as I'm closing now and ending the, the webinar, um, I just want to remind you that um, we do have an ability to help you. Um, some of you already have teams, but you are not necessarily using it for all of these other amazing things that I've mentioned, right? We'd be more than happy to help you to, um, to, to take your existing uh, applications, whether it's Microsoft Teams or any other application. Let's see how we can help you maximize uh, your ability to use these teams in creating that uh, uh, digital modern workplace in order to empower your people, build that um, high performance culture and obviously protect the organization uh, regardless of where people are working from. So please do get in touch uh, and I'd be more than happy to see who um, in, in our team would be in a position uh, to work with you. You know, I started off by talking about the devastation of COVID-19 and really that, that inflection point that we are facing from COVID-19 
and also from that organic digital transformation that has been happening over the last couple of years. Um, and together, COVID-19 and digital transformation, again, have worsened <laughs> that uh, inflection point. Um, and um, it's not the end of the world. There are ways to find yourself, to find your feet, uh, to get up and be able to, you know, to, to really be, be able to, to compete all over again. It's not the end of the world. But what I do urge you folks to do is to raise the sense of urgency. The idea of waiting and waiting to see what's going to happen, we no longer have that privilege. Um, and I know a lot of you are doing that because, you know, you're afraid of failure. You're afraid of making mistakes. Well, guess what? those who succeed are the ones who make the most mistakes, okay? Because the best way to learn to see what is the best to do is about making those mistakes. So go out there and, and just simply try. Try um, because that's what's going to enable you to see what it is that you need to be able to do. And to do all of these things is going to take you a while, right? Meaning it's not a sprint. You can't start today and believe that you're going to finish tomorrow. It's really about preparing yourself for a marathon um, that, you will, um, that you will be part of uh, for the longest time because. I heard that there is actually another uh, seemingly swine-like flu um, that has been discovered and seems to be a little bit more deadly than COVID-19. So we need to start getting used to the idea of enabling our people to work from home and to be, um, to be mobile and to be productive while we are still um, you know, working from home or whatever the case may be, while we are in this situation. Because I don't want to say things will get worse. We do want to hope for the best, but we do want to prepare for the, uh, for the worst. Okay, and this is really what this conversation is about. And folks, with all that said, I highly appreciate your time today. Um, if you'd like us to help you to build that modern workplace, we are available. We, we can do free consultations. We can see um, if the Microsoft Teams that we spoke about would be a fit for you and if our services can be a fit. And for those of you who'd, who'd like to just have a conversation, my email address is on the screen. So feel free to reach out. I'd be more than happy to see how we can help you. Thanks again for your time today, and I hope it was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, I'll stick around for another two minutes or so um, and to address any questions you may have. Thank you once again. Highly, highly appreciate it. Thank you. All right, I think I may have one or two other questions. So, Lawrence, Mr. Zimmer, you, you, you're saying, is it possible to send the recording presentation? Yes, I will. Um, for those people who have attended, we typically put together the recording. I am recording it right now. I'm sure you can see on the screen. I will do my best to get it to you today, but generally it takes us about a day. So tomorrow morning, latest, I promise we'll send, we'll send it out. Um, again, um, Maraka, you're also asking about the same. We will definitely um, share the recording with you. And I thank you again for your time. Um, and I will reach out to those who've asked me to, to reach out to. So folks, if there are any other questions, I'm here. Uh, please do feel free, feel free to, um, uh, to reach out. Um, Hank, thank you. Um, I'm glad it was uh, informative and thanks to everybody else who's attended. I really appreciate your presence and without me taking any more of your time, um, Again, you have my email address, feel free to reach out. If you don't have any specific questions right now, I'd be more than happy to do that. Okay. All right, it looks like there aren't any questions, folks. Um, without repeating myself again, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure. Um, feel free to reach out. Speak to you soon. Cheers.